now it's my pleasure to introduce our first uh, speaker today. Um, it will be John Bennett, who is the project manager of SARC. Uh, he has been with us since the very beginning, and he has done a, a very good job at making sure all 14 partners are talking together and uh, working together as efficiently as possible. Uh, so um, I think uh, he deserves a, a round of applause for that alone. Um, thank you, John. Um, yeah, and John's going to be talking about uh, the pressures uh, facing um, coastal cities and maybe the, some of the challenges that we have to overcome. So over to you, John. Thank you, David. And for all that work and management, I get to go first. So thank you very much, everyone. Um, so just quickly, I'm going to be talking about what are the main pressures on coastal cities. Um, what I've done is decided to break this into four major themes. Um, but before I go into the pressures, which is a bit more of a negative spin, I want to put a bit more of a positive spin on the day. Uh, first of all, I'd like to offer thanks to a special member of the audience, which is Councillor Carol Maroney. Um, she's a cabinet member for Environment, Culture and Tourism at South End City Council. Um, without support of people like Carol, projects like this are very, very difficult to implement. So I'd just like to thank her personally for being here and supporting the project. Um, so, what are the pressures on coastal cities? Um, the main categories I've sort of come up with as a main pressure around funding resources, recreational use, uh, coastal squeeze, and the fact that we put hard infrastructure across pretty much every city we've got in the area, and legislation. So, in terms of the UK, um, our biggest issue is funding. Um, we have plenty of legislation that support MBS, which came out a couple of years ago. Um, one of the main challenges in the UK is the fact that the funding model is probably about five years behind the legislation. So in terms of how we actually fund MBS, um, the main instrument we use is funding from the Environment Agency, which is part of DEFRA. Um, but the way the current funding model is set up it basically means that MBS don't really reach the desired standard in order to implement it in large scale in a lot of areas in the UK. Um, it tends to be the way that it's quantified is the number of properties that are protected by a measure. And generally speaking, when you look at the current funding model that's in place, uh, the only way you can meet their requirements is by hard infrastructure. Um, Moving on to France, now France is a very different case. Um, since 2015, the way the French fund the use of coastal defence is by basically putting it onto the citizens and communities to fund their own protection. Um, there are some authorities that are involved in France, but generally speaking, anything around coastal defence and using nature-based solutions is unfortunately put to the local communities and the local governments. So it's extremely difficult for French sounds to actually fund and implement nature-based solutions. Um, moving on. Now, Belgium and Holland are a different case. Uh, in Belgium, they have quite a good funding model where they've been doing a lot of investment in MBS. Uh, the only issue around Belgium is obviously now they're OK, but moving on probably to 2100, resources are becoming a big issue in Belgium where they're using up all the supplies of sand and it's becoming more and more costly to get the sand they need in order to nourish and use nature-based solutions in Belgium. Um, but they've been doing a lot of work in Belgium. Um, with MDK, since 2013, they did a survey and discovered that the beach levels weren't really offering the protection they needed in Belgium. So the amount of nourishment they've done in Belgium is massive. Um, you'll actually see from one of the pilots in Middlekirky how much sand they put on the beach. Um, moving on to the Netherlands. Now, the Netherlands is a very interesting case when it comes to sea defence. Um, they're well regarded as probably the authority in the world on how to defend against the sea because they've basically been doing it for hundreds and hundreds of years ever since they reclaimed the land. Um, so there's three major rivers that row, flow through the Netherlands um, and it forms a massive deltrine system. Now, the interesting thing with the Netherlands is obviously they're running out of resources as well. They have a lot more sand, but the amount they're using, it might become an issue, depending on how much sea level rises, as to how much sand they really need to move and how much it's going to cost them moving forwards. But 
with the Netherlands, they've done a lot of innovative things. Like one a good example is a sand motor they put in place, which is, if you haven't heard of the sand motor, it's basically a very, very large, millions and millions of cub cubic meters of sand put into one area and let the coastal processes move that around. And then the UK actually copied that idea um, up in Norfolk as well, at the Bacton uh, gas terminal. So one of the other major pressures for any coastal city when it comes to implementing MBS is obviously recreational use. Um, I've chosen a lot of pictures here. Uh, one of the good example here is top left, which is actually South End. If you look out the window, that's the area over there. Um, you can see from the picture below that one that actually there's not really a lot of room for nature. In fact, there's not really a lot of room for anything there. It's quite a busy area. It's extremely high in tourism, and obviously it's a massive industry for South End. So how can we make room for nature when we've got the pressures of recreational use? Um, in other areas, uh, like the top right there is Ostend. You can see again, it's a very, very busy picture, but they've got a lot more sand. So <laughs> it's a different story. Um, so how do we implement nature-based solutions in those kind of areas? Well, I think Middlekirky might have come up with a solution. You saw in the previous video how they've implemented a dune system. And actually, the people prefer to walk on the dune system now as opposed to the hard, hard standing. So could this be the solution of making MBS work in an area where you have a lot of recreational use? Um, so moving on to coastal squeeze and hard infrastructure. Now, for South End, it was a particular big issue trying to implement MBS because we have only seven miles of coastline and along those seven miles of coastline, I would say probably 80 to 90% of that coastline is hard infrastructure. And where we have the hard infrastructure there, it means we've got very little space left for any MBS. In fact, the coastal squeeze is such a problem that actually in some areas of South End, the mean high water line is actually the sea defence. So when the tide comes up, the water hits the sea defence and there's nothing left. Now, obviously, the best MBSs are generally implemented into the intertidal zone and we're losing that slowly but surely in South End. So what we had to do was look at innovative ways to move around that and look at other areas where we could implement MBS. Um, and a little bit of a note out to Gary, who's one of the panelists. Obviously, the long durée, which is the piece that Gary loves and constantly goes on about, has taught us that nature has had the solutions for thousands of years, and actually the coastline's been pretty much stable for thousands of years. It's only since we've started implementing hard infrastructure and messing around with the coastal systems that actually nature's stopped working. So we need to unlearn what we've done. Um, in terms of learning, now UK legislation is actually pretty strong for using MBS. I'm not going to run through this lot because there's obviously a lot there and we'll get the slides sent to you afterwards. And you're going to hear a lot more about this in the speak, speakers from Joanne Matthews. Um, she's on Thursday and she's going to be talking about a lot of the implementation with this. So I'm not going to ruin that for her. I'll leave Joanne to go through all this lovely stuff. But yeah. We've got the legislation. This came out a couple of years ago. It does support the use of nature-based solutions. The only problem is we haven't really got the funding to back it up yet in the UK. Um, I would have gone, about, gone on about the EU legislation, but obviously we've got Mikhail here, who is a global expert. He will come up and he will speak about COP27. He'll talk about the EU, and then we'll go down to a more granular level at some other work that's been done in other countries. So thank you very much, everyone.